Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. So, we've made it through the Big Bad and the Hungry on very hard, so now we have to attempt the Mountains of Despair on very hard. Things are going to be quite difficult here, whereas the Big the Bad and the Hungry, I was expecting it to be hard, and it actually was pretty easy. I already know this is going to be quite a bit of a challenge, and much more of a step up than oh so hard was. Let's just see what's in store for us, shall we? Oh boy. Throughout these gloomy mountains, strange carvings left by ancient peoples are everywhere. Back in the lion's lair once again. The lion's lair of level 3. The stone lion requires a certain order from the Zumbinis before they can pass. To move the lion's stone paw, the Zumbinis must be grouped together and sorted by two attributes, such as nose color and hairstyle. One attribute is primary and tells you the groupings of the Zumbinis by family. The second attribute is secondary and tells you the order within the family. The symbols on the wall next to the lion give clues of what attributes to sort the Zumbinis by. For example, colored noses and hairstyles on the wall hint to first line up the Zumbinis by color of nose and then by hairstyle within the group with the same colored nose. So yeah, there's a bit more of order to it now. So you can see purple noses before green noses. You can also see sleepy eyes on the wall, and those are glasses on the wall. So this means that while green noses have to come further up in the line than purple noses, green nosed uh, zumbinis with glasses go get lined up further ahead than green nosed zumbinis with sleepy eyes. So gotta watch out for that. So purple nose, sleepy eyes guys go in the back. Well, there's only one purple nose, so. There you go. Now we got green noses after that, so anybody green with sleepy eyes? Nope. Okay. Well, we know glasses have to come first. Alright, how about red nose with glasses? Nope. Okay, then. Well, considering that's very close to the front of the line, I'm guessing blue noses go first. Yep, blue noses go first. Then red noses with nope, red noses not with glasses. Sunglasses must take priority because you can see we have four zumbinis le with red noses left. Three of them are a cyclops, and one of them is a sunglasses. And there's only one spot ahead. Alrighty then. So now we know the nose order. So sunglasses first. We don't have sunglasses. So let's see, sleepy eyes in the back. Then cyclopses. Yep, and then normalize. Cool. How fortunate for Zumbinis that you are their guide. And the nice thing about the Lion's Lair is each ascending difficulty, while it gets progressively tougher and more trial but in error based, you get more pegs in the wall. So especially for the last difficulty where it's gonna be insane and we'll be messing up a ton, we have like nine pegs in the wall or something. So that'll be very nice. Thank you for letting us by, Mr. Lion. Have a nice time in Narnia, Aslan. Have you seen the wardrobe nearby? Oh boy. The mirror machine. This is where the difficulty really ranks up from the last uh, pre uh, previous difficulty. It's barely even recognizable anymore! We, the Zubinis are already on their minecarts, and we don't even get to choose the reflection. Instead, we have to choose the filters. Mirror Machine, level 3. The mirror machine requires matching reflections in the center, center crystal before allowing Zubinis to pass. Place the attribute filters in an order that will transform the Zumbini images and make this possible. For example, a filter with shaggy hair will transform the ponytail hair of a Zumbini to shaggy hair. You can place up to three filters on either side of the center crystal. When you're ready, place the correct filters on either side of the center crystal and then click the lever. If the projected images are identical, the
the Zumbini will pass to the other side. If not, the Zumbini will be knocked back to the Shade Tree Base Camp. Click on the lever again and clear the images and continue playing. Some filters display changing attributes and the transformation will vary depending on the image of the Zumbini. For example, a filter with blinking hairstyles will change the hairstyle of the Zumbini, but the transformation will be different depending on the original hairstyle of the Zumbini. That's where things get complicated. So as you can see, we have a Zumbini here and a Zumbini here. They both have a spring, but they have different everything else. So we need to change these guys' noses, hair, and eyes. So you can see here, there's a flashing nose, and that's the only nose filter. If we put it in front of this guy, well, guess what? Red will change the attribute nose to purple. Or if we, so if we put it on this side, a purple nose will get changed into a blue nose. So that's kind of difficult to figure out. So by process of elimination, we've got to put it on that side because that's the only way to make the noses match. So now as of this point, he has sleepy eyes. Are there sleepy eyes up here? Yes, there are. That will give us sleepy eyes, but that'll also give us green hat hair. This guy also is kind of put green hat hair here. So before pulling the lever, especially on this difficulty rank, you really want to make sure you know what you're doing. So double check your work. Bowl cut is going to get turned into a green hat. This guy's bald is going to turn into a green hat as well. So hair matches. He's got sleepy eyes on this side. He's got sleepy eyes on that side. And they're not flashing, so it will be constant. This guy's got a purple nose. That guy's getting a purple nose. And they both have a sprain. So let's go. Yeah, this is where the puzzles get really complicated. All right, different feet. We gotta put it on this side because otherwise the feet can't match up. They both have a green nose, so we don't have to mess with that. We gotta change their eyes and hair. Let's see. We're gonna have to use the flashing hair, aren't we? If we put flashing hair in front of this guy, it turns into green hat hair, and in front of that guy, it turns into bald. Sweet. All right, so we got a bald tuft on that side, bald tuft on that side. Oh. We got sleepy eyes on this side, sleepy eyes on that side. Both have green noses and both will have bikes. The mirror machine is always the most time consuming. Well, not always the most time consuming puzzle. <laughs> That'll change a bit later. All right. Well, we got to make that guy have a gr uh, an orange nose. Now we got to change their eyes and hair. Um. Oh, ho yep. So we put two flashing hair filters there. The green head hair gets turned into spiky, uh, spiky hair, but then the spiky hair that got changed is going to get changed into a ponytail. And we can put this on this side. They're both going to have a ponytail. They're both going to have normal eyes. They're both going to have a spray and an orange nose. Woot! Yeah, with the flashing filters, fins can get crazy. And it gets even crazier on the next difficulty. But in a way, the next difficulty is almost easier than the uh, previous one. All right, well, you can get a bike. They both have spiky hair, both have glasses, both have a green nose, both have a bike. Double checking your work is crucial on this difficulty. They have the same feet, they have the same nose. Both have green hat hair, they're both a cyclops. Yep. Once you understand how the flashing filters work, this one gets a lot easier and more easily manageable. Oh, I love it when you get two filters with that change the two features you really need to change real quick. Two filters that change their hair and eyes when the hair and eyes were the hard things to change. That's lovely. <laughs> the pony tails, both are so close. Well, that was an easy one. <laughs> one filter.
I would really like to look at the source code to Zoominis and figure out how they created some of these puzzles, like what algorithms they have to create these puzzles so effortlessly. They're both Paul, they're both Cyclops, they're both Bunos, they're both Spring. That's an easy one. <laughs> I love it when it's just like you put one filter down. <laughs> that makes my life so much easier. Oh ho! Oh, hang on. Both have green hair, both have suit guys. Cool. That one took a little bit of finagling. You should only have two left. Oh, oh, oh almost pushed the- I, I didn't see that was flashing there. He needs that nose there. That changes to a ponytail, so both have ponytail, both have... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was my bad. I was just being dumb. Alright, last guy. You need a blue nose. Well... Okay, there we go. And now we need to match their eyes together? Oh, wait. Alright, so we're changing his hair three times. So, they both have feet, they both have a green nose, they both have sunglasses, and they both have spiky hair. Yes! It's a huge shame they should screw up on the final one. <laughs> You've done quite well! So, that one's more... That one's pretty tough. It's also long, so that combines to make for a very challenge, My, that was challenging a challenge. Bender, but onward and downward they continue. That was ominous. Yeah, Bubble Wonder Abyss on very hard. This is gonna knock your socks off in terms of the difficulty, at least. Oh yeah. So you remember the last difficulty mentioned these uh, colored triggers here? Yeah, that's what they're talking about. These switches, when you pass over them, are going to change these directional arrows. Bubble Wonder Abyss, level 3. The Zumbinis are seeking a way across Bubble Wonder Abyss. Directional arrows and Zumbini features tell you the direction a Zumbini will move in. For example, Zumbinis will move in the direction the white arrow is pointing. If a square displays an arrow with a symbol of a Zumbini feature, such as a red nose, any Zumbini matching that feature will travel in the direction of the arrow. Those that do not match continue in their original direction. Be aware that some arrows change direction once a Zumbini has passed over it. Also notice that colored arrows will change when a Zumbini passes over a colored square and triggers it. Point ahead and sword Zumbinis before sending them on the their way, the order, is important. It's the same vein as last difficulty. There's also only one direction we can send them, not two. So if we send them up, they're going to hit that arrow, continue going up, they're going to go this way, 
If they have a green nose, they're going to go down and into the vortex, unless we hit the purple switch first, in which case then they're going to go this way, down. If they have a bull cut, they go that way and up, but if they have a purple nose, they're going to go down this way and up. And if they go that way and they don't have a bull cut, then they die. Okay. If they have a red nose, they're going to hit the purple trigger and go down that same pathway. And if they don't have anything, they still go that way. Okay, well, that's overly complicated. So the, the way I see it, there's no reason to not hit the purple trigger as soon as possible, because there's only one trigger here, and all it does is put lemmi uh, lemmings... <laughs> and all it does is put the zumbinis in the vortex which kills them so I probably want to hit that as soon as possible so I want to send a red nose guy over here and make sure he has a bull cut well, what do you know there's only one red nose bull cut guy we have you go first That's going to help us get our green-nosed Zumbinis across. So at this point, let's get all our bolt. Let's see. Alright, so the... Alright, so before we hit the orange trigger, we need to send all of our bull cut Zumbinis across, because as soon as that orange trigger hits, all bull cuts are getting directed straight into the vortex. And this guy, once we send him across, is going to hit the trigger, so you will be the last bull cut guy we send across. We can now send Mr. Bull Cut with a green nose, and Mr. Bull Cut with an orange nose. Let's see, do they overlap at all? No, I don't think so. And you, Mr. Bull Cut with an orange nose. And I don't think I'm missing any other bull cuts. Nope, that's all the bull cuts. Alright, so they go nice and cross. And now this guy comes after them and is gonna change the direction of the orange arrow. <laughs> And keep in mind, the only f that doesn't affect this side. All this does is prevent them from hitting the orange trigger again. And this will now direct all the lemmings over here. I said lemmings again. I'm going to say... Oh my gosh. That is terrible. Alright. So the Zumbinis will now go this way. We have no bolt cuts left, so we don't have to worry about that. If they go this way, and they happen to have the bald tuft, they're getting into the vortex. If they go that way and happen to have spiky hair, they're going into the vortex. Otherwise... They're going straight across, and they're going straight across. Cool, so we're going to alternate spiky hair with bald head. And do they overlap at all? Well, the bald guys will. As long as you plan ahead, the first three difficulties of Bubble Wonder Abyss are not that bad. The last difficulty of Bubble Wonder Abyss is really bad, though. You've got to plan everything in advance. Otherwise, you're... well, you're just kind of screwed. Alright. Spiky hair, bald head. I am terrified of sending the Zumbinis too closely together. Because if I do, they could potentially pop each other's bubbles and both fall into the abyss. And that is literally the last thing that I would want. And now we can just alternate spiky-haired guys with non-spiky-haired guys. I love the sad music on this level. It really adds a lot of atmosphere.
This is a little bit mean because going that way, it's hard to tell if they would actually hit the ledge or if there's like a gap there that they'd fall down. But how else would the Zumbinis get across? And that's Bubble Wonder Abyss on very hard. That's actually, that's about the, the difficulty I remember it being. You did it! You saved them all! Woohoo! Is this it? Could this be the place they've been seeking? A place of hope and prosperity? Beautiful. What? Ooh. Sleeping on the job? While Zumbini lives hang in the balance? Hurry back and get the others! Alright, man. Well, I think the fireworks have intensified, and we get a new thing! This paperclip museum was made for the Zumbinis who deciphered the lion's logic, correctly calculated the crystals, and ascended the airy abyss when traveling was very hard. April 6th, 2018. Seriously, we've got a nice population in Zumbiniville now. We've got 112 Zumbinis there, that's amazing! You'll also see Who's By You is now yellow! So that's what we'll be doing in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Colorful Artie, I hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.